let's start this poem which is quite an interesting poem written by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. The name of the poem is Haunted Houses and this is Dr. Sagar Pandya presenting this particular poem to all of you. I'm sure you are going to enjoy this poem. The name of the poem is Haunted Houses which itself means that here the entire poem is talking about the houses which are haunted, which are surrounded by spirits or ghosts or the way it is presented here, they are surrounded by phantoms who are supernatural beings and they are definitely quite scary, isn't it? Whatever movies we have seen, whatever ideas we have regarding phantoms or the supernatural beings, they are always scary. Whatever we don't understand, it always scares us, isn't it? So let us try to understand this poem so that it won't scare us at all, isn't it? So the poem starts like this. The very first line it says, all houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. So over here, it says that wherever the people have lived and then they have died, they have already occupied those houses. They were living in those houses. They possessed those houses and now they are still there. The houses are still haunted and whoever is living over there, they are the current owners, but earlier these people, they already resided there and that is why these houses earlier belong to them and still they are living there. So technically we can say that maybe they are still having the possession of that house. Next line says, through the open doors, the harmless phantoms on their errands glide. Now they are called harmless phantoms and they are coming from the open doors, which means that they are not hiding. They are not sneaking into the house from any small, tiny corner. Okay. They are not coming from the holes or anywhere. Okay. But they are coming from right from the open doors. They are harmless phantoms. They don't harm anybody. They are not hurting anyone. They are just present over there. They are not seen by anyone but they are still there. They are living there and the creatures, the phantoms, these spirits are having some possession of the house. They are moving on their errands and they are gliding. So obviously they are not walking. They are phantoms. They are spirits. They don't have physical form. They are not in the body. Okay. So they are currently having a metaphysical state and they are just gliding in the air. They are moving their errands. Errands means small tasks which are given to people. So they are just doing their small stuff type of work and it says with feet that make no sound upon the floors which means that they are not making any sound. They are not disturbing people. They are not making their presence felt and without any noise they are just gliding. Their feet are not touching the floors and which means that they are not disturbing people. The people who are living over there, the people who are residing in the houses, they are not coming on the way. They are not intruding in their private space in any manner. We meet them at the doorway on the stairs. It says that we meet these people. We meet these creatures on the doorway. They are constantly you know, coming on our way, but they are not disturbing us. They are on the stairs, but they don't intrude and they are along the passages also, but they are not stopping us. They are not coming in the way. They are not disturbing in any manner. They come and they go, which means that they are just moving to and fro. They are coming to us. They are passing by us. They are going away. And all this happens without any noise, without their presence being felt by us. They are impalpable impressions. They are putting their impalpable impressions on the air, which means that there is no vibration. If anybody passes by us, then we sometimes feel that somebody has passed. But over here, when the spirit is passing, when the phantom is passing by us, their presence is almost impalpable, which means that there is no vibration. There is no uh, presence which is felt. They are just gliding. They are moving noiselessly. And the last line says a sense of something moving to and fro. So they are moving from one area to the other, from one room to the other, from one location to the other. 
but all this happens without making any type of noise. There are more guests at table than the hosts invited, which means that over here, whoever is sitting on the dining table or on a discussion table, they are obviously present over there, but who else is present? There are more guests. They are not invited over there. They are uninvited people. They are spirits who are already residing there. They are already present around us, but we cannot feel them. So the people, the physical people who are sitting over there, obviously they are hosts, but the guests means the spirits and the phantoms and the ghosts, they are just surrounding the area, but their presence is not felt. They are not occupying any space. The illuminated hall is thronged with quiet, inoffensive ghosts, which means that in the hall where the discussion is happening, the table is full of people, but there are more people over there. And in that well-lit area, which means that here everybody is able to see the other people, but the spirits are not seen. They are thronging the place. They are crowding the place. Thronged means they are in lot of number. And they are quietly sitting over there. They are just present over there and they are inoffensive. They are not intrusive in any manner. They are not troubling in any manner and they are not disturbing. They are as silent as the pictures on the wall. I'm sure students you are noticing over here. It shows a simile. The example of simile is right there present in front of you in the last line as silent as the pictures on the wall. I'm sure you can notice two as over there, as silent as, which means that they are so silent as if they are like pictures on the wall. They are quiet. They are making no noise over there. And like a picture, they are just present, but they are not speaking anything. The next line says, the stranger at my fireside cannot see the forms I see. Over here, I would like to mention that the poet H. W. Longfellow, he was a member of a society and it is called Fireside Poets. So he was a member of that group and the group's name was Fireside Poets. So he is probably sitting with the other poets and he is reciting his poem or he is sharing his ideas with the other poets. and. When he is sitting over there, maybe he is noticing some of the spirits. He has seen some ghosts or phantoms. He has felt the presence of them around him. And he is right now believing that only he is the person who is able to see these forms. And the other people present in that room, they are not able to see these kind of phantoms. Nor hear the sounds I hear. So it is not only the visible presence. He is also able to listen to whatever the spirits are speaking or making whatever sounds he but perceives what is so the stranger over here the fellow poet who is sitting with him who is accompanying him he is only able to see what is there so the physical reality is perceived by him but the supernatural reality the reality that is not seen by others H. W. Longfellow, our poet, is able to notice that while unto me all that has been is visible and clear. And he says that for him everything is quite visible, quite clear and the way he is able to see the physical people in the same manner, he is also able to see the other ghosts as well, the spirits as well. The next line says we have no title deeds to house or lands. H. W. Longfellow over here says that these ghosts, these spirits, he presents them as we and he's speaking on their behalf. He says that the ghosts have no physical right. They do not have any legal occupancy of those houses, of those lands. They were earlier the member of the houses, but now they are dead, they are buried and they are long back gone. Okay, but still it is said that they have no title deeds. They don't own the house. They don't know, own the land. Owners and occupants of earlier dates. They already had these houses in their occupancy earlier, but now they are gone and they don't have any possession on that. From graves forgotten stretch their dusty hands and from the 
graves they are buried right now under the earth and they are stretching their dusty hands dirty the hands which are full of dirt and hold in mortmain still their old estates and they are still holding those estates but they are not having any legal rights on them okay the next line says the spirit world around this world of sense here the poet is talking about two different worlds the one world which is mentioned in the first line is the spirit world the spirit world is the world of phantoms the world of ghosts the world that belongs to the creatures who are unseen unheard noiseless creatures and the other world is world of sense we we have five senses and with those five senses we perceive the world so another world is the world of human beings so humans are living in a physical world and the spirits are living in the world that is a supernatural area and here the distinct bifurcation is given floats like an atmosphere the spirits are floating like an atmosphere the way the atmosphere is surrounding us but we cannot see them we can just feel the atmosphere in the same manner the spirits also are floating around us we can just feel them but we can't touch them and we cannot hear them and they are everywhere they they waft through these earthly mists and whatever mist is around us on the earth they are just wafting through that and vapors dense a vital breath of more ethereal air they are like a vital breath a strong significant breath of more ethereal air ethereal means something that is unreal something that is supernatural so ethereal air by this particular phrase the poet is trying to say that they belong to the world which is not perceived by the human beings it is beyond our capacity to understand our little lives are kept in equipoise by opposite attractions and desires so whatever little lives we have they are the lives are in equipoise they are balanced so the world of supernatural and the world of natural people that is human beings this is a balancing uh, scenario by opposite attractions and desires so whatever their desires are it is exactly in opposition to our desires what we desire is completely different right we are materialistic people we want facilities we want amenities we want things but the ghosts the phantoms they do not want anything like this they do not want any earthly possessions and it says the struggle of the instinct that enjoys and the more noble instinct that aspires so again the poet is trying to show the difference the struggle of the instinct that enjoys so they are enjoying there is a struggle over there and the more noble instinct that aspires they aspire to have certain possessions they also have their wants but they are of a different level and then it is written these perturbations this perpetual jar of earthly wants and aspirations high the poet is trying to say over here that human beings they are demanding lot of things they want a lot of stuff they are materialistic people and all these wants all these desires all these wishes and aspirations they are coming from the influence of an unseen star an undiscovered planet in our sky the poet over here is trying to go to the metaphysical level and he is trying to say that the universe is responsible for whatever desires we have whatever we want in this world it is because there is a power that is working beyond our capacity and in the universe there is a star there is a planet which is influencing our decisions okay and that is why our desires are limitless whatever we want it keeps on increasing and our wants are never ending and as the moon from some dark gate of cloud throws over the sea a floating bridge of light i'm sure you can imagine what the poet is trying to tell us over here this is a classic example of imagery with these words an image is definitely you are going to see a visual you will be able to imagine a ray of 
moon or the bridge of light that descends from the sky it comes down and it is touching the sea so it is like a portal that takes people or that takes something from one world to the other world so it is a connection the poet is trying to establish a connection through this bridge of light and he says that the earth is somehow in some manner connected with the universe and there is a portal that takes these ideas from world world to the other across whose trembling planks our fancies crowd into the realm of mystery and night in this world of mystery in the world of suspense whatever we cannot understand it is always mysterious isn't it so the world of phantoms the supernatural world is a mysterious world and it is quite dark and that is what attracts us we want to know more about these kind of things and the next line says so from the world of spirits there descends a bridge of light connecting it with this over whose unsteady floor that sways and bends the entire bridge is descending from the sky it is touching upon the earth it becomes a portal from which the ideas and aspirations can travel and it is like an unsteady floor which is swaying and bending so it is unstable it is constantly moving and wander our thoughts about the dark abyss and our thoughts are everywhere in this darkness we are not able to make sense of whatever is happening and that is why it is called as dark abyss it is so dark that it doesn't make sense so here the poem ends thank you very much students i'm sure you have understood and when you are preparing read each and every line try to understand each and every word and that is what will make better sense thank you very much students